All right, so this morning we'll be talking about mutation and chromosomal aberrations. So we have basic two categories of mutation. We have those that produce changes in a single gene. And then we have those that produce changes in the whole chromosome. So those that produce changes in a single gene are known as gene mutation. And those that produce changes in whole chromosomes are known as chromosomal mutations. So this means that mutations can occur in a single gene, and of course, mutation can also occur um, in a chromosome. So mutation actually is defined as the change in gene structure or change in chromosomal structure. So that's what mutation is generally. So you could see in this example, in this um, graphics, the change that occur. So you could see here the deletion, you could see duplication here. You could see inversion, and of course, you have translocation. All right, so, so this is a point mutation. This is also a point mutation. So it is called point mutation because they occur at a single point in the DNA, DNA sequence. And of course, you know that DNA is the oxyribonucleic acid. So the point mutation occur at a single point in the DNA sequence. So they generally occur during replication. So this is what we have in this instance. And point mutation can include substitution, insertion, and deletion. So you could see that point mutation can occur as it does in substitution here. Point mutation can also occur during um, at insertion. And of course, it can also occur to include this deletion. So point mutation includes substitution, insertion, and deletion. So you could see this before mutation occurs. This is normal in this instance. And here you have substitution taking place here. The cytosine is being replaced by tyramine. And here you have an insertion taking place here. And then here you have a deletion taking place here. So this is an example of gene mutation. Now let's look at substitution. Let's look at what takes place in substitution. So in substitution, one base is changed to a different base. So substitution usually affect no more than a single amino acid or sometimes they have no effect at all. So in this example, you could see the base cytosine is replaced by the base tyramine. As you can see in this example, and this results in a change in the mRNA codon. That is messenger RNA codon from arginine to histidine. So CGU arginine to CAU histidine. So you can see that substitution taking place here. However, a change in the last base of the codon from CGU to CGA, for example, would still specify the amino acid arginine. So this takes place during substitution. And we can go forward to look at insertion and deletion. So let's quickly look at what we have in insertion and deletion. Okay, so insertion additions are point mutations in which one base is inserted or removed from the DNA sequence. And these are called frame shift mutations because they shift the reading frame. So if a nucleotide is added or deleted, the bases are still read in groups of three. But now those groupings shift in every codon that follows the mutation. So this is insertion here, and of course, this is deletion here. All right, so haven't talked about these concepts. We can quickly look at what chromosomal aberration is. Chromosomal aberrations. Of course, I told us at the beginning that you could have um, 
gene mutations, we could have chromosomal mutations. Chromosomal mutation only alters the number of or position of existing genes. So that could be a basic difference between a gene mutation and a chromosomal mutation. So I'll come again. A gene mutation normally alters the information that is conveyed by a gene. And in other words, it alters the message. Whereas in a chromosomal mutation, it alters the number or position of existing genes. So of course, they may also involve a modification in the morphology of chromosomes or a change in the number of chromosomes. So as you can see here, so this is the original chromosome. And so talking about chromosomal mutations, you could also have deletion taking place, you could have duplication taking place, you could have inversion taking place, and of course you could also have translocation taking place. So this is the original chromosome here, and of course deletion takes place here. So you could see this is, um, look at this letter A, B, C here. So B is deleted here, so you have A, C, so deletion takes place here. Here you have duplication. There is duplication of this particular gene, so you have B, B. And of course, this is the original chromosome here. In inversion, you could see this is being inverted. Look at the sequence of this gene, and of course, look at the reversal that you have here. So it's an inversion. And here, a translocation is taking place. All right, of course, if you understand that deletion occurs during pairing in meiosis, basically, we're going to look at morphological aberrations of chromosomes. I've, um, we've tried to look at these um, examples, but in other words, we also can look at what takes place during these um, processes. So, deletion involves the loss of all or part of a chromosome. For example, in human babies, deletion of a segment of a chromosome number five will cause a disease called Cree du Chat syndrome. So, it has an effect. So, when a chromosome is deleted, when a chromosome is duplicated, when any of these things happens, and of course, it has an effect on, on humans. So, we're going to look at a lot of chromosomal aberrations. And um, you could see, like I said, if you have deletion of a segment of chromosome number five, you have a syndrome called Cree du Chat. And some of the characteristic features of a baby exhibiting Cree du Chat syndrome is that the baby cries like a cat and is mentally retarded with a small head. You could see here that a deletion takes place, and because of this deletion at position 5, which the that means that a portion of the chromosome is lost at position 5 during cell division, so it results in a child having this syndrome called Cree du Chat syndrome. So the deletion occurs at the short arm of chromosome 5. And we can equally see um, some of the characteristic features of a child exhibiting Cree du Chat syndrome. This individuals, they also have an extensive grouping of abnormalities with severe mental retardation being the most important one. Of course, they have characteristic feature of a small head, a wide um, set eyes, and low birth rate, and of course, slow growth. So it occurs between um, one in 20,000 and one in 50,000 babies. Now, let's look at duplication. Let's look at some effects of duplication. So duplication produces an extra copy of all or part of a chromosome. So here, a gene or many genes are repeated twice or more times in the same chromosomes. They are repeated twice or more times in the same chromosomes. So the fragment that got cut off from one chromosome attaches to its homologous, thus duplicating certain genes on it. And we can move on 
to inversion. But the fragment that got cut off from one chromosome is able to reattach to it, but in reverse orientation. So that is the key word. That is the key word, in reverse orientation. For example, the chromosome with the gene order A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is broken between B, C, D. It's broken between B, C, D. And the center portion turned around 180 degree, resulting in the gene order. A, D, C, B, E, F, G, H. So this inversion reverses the direction of parts of the chromosomes. Now we'll quickly go on to um, look at translocation. So in translocation, an exchange of parts between two non-homologous chromosomes is called reciprocal translocation. An exchange of parts between two non-homologous chromosomes. Exchange of parts. So there's an exchange of parts between two non-homologous chromosomes. Now that is called reciprocal translocation. So in simple translocation, a gene or rather a segment of one chromosome breaks and is transferred to another non-homologous chromosomes. So here, translocation occurs when parts of one chromosome breaks off and attaches to another, as can be seen in this diagram. All right. Now there is um, a term referred to as aneuploidy in humans. So we have trisomies. In orthosomes and we have a nuclear of sex chromosomes so the other trisomies we have trisomy 21 we have trisomy 18 and then trisomy 13 and in a nuclear of sex chromosomes we have Turner syndrome Feinfeta syndrome Jacob syndrome and metaphemales so in trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome, you can see that the chromosome number is 47. Knowing fully well that humans have, the chromosome number in humans is 46. And of course, there's an extra chromosome here, and of course at position 18. There's an extra chromosome here, to cause at position 13. Now, in the aneuploidy of sex chromosomes, Turner syndrome is an example, and this is 45. So, which means that one chromosome is lost. They're supposed to have 46. But we have 45 years, one chromosome is lost. And in Klinefelter syndrome, there's an extra chromosome here. So you have XXY. So that is Klinefelter syndrome. And Jacob's syndrome, you have an extra chromosome also. That is XYY. So these are super females. And of course, these are super males. And of course, we have meta females, really super females. So they have XXX. So we're going to really expound a bit. So in trisomy 21, that is called Down syndrome. So it is the most single cause of birth defects in humans. And that takes place in one of about 660 births. Usually, this is due to the age of the mother. So we have some characteristic features like prominent facial features, upward slanting eyes, open mouth, with thong protrusion. We have a simian crease in palm as you can see, as you'll be able to see in this diagram mental tradition is under characteristics um, congenital heart defect increased susceptibility to many diseases and usually those individuals are mostly sterile they have shorter lifespan and the risk of getting a down syndrome child increases with the age of the mother so women that are older, they have a tendency to give birth to children with Down syndrome. So it, it does, it does, um, there's an increased risk with older women. Trisomy 18 is Edward syndrome. 
and um, in Edwards syndrome, the high mortality rate is usually due to the presence of cardiac and renal malformations, feeding difficulties. You have sepsis with its infection caused by the central nervous system defects. So the organisms also experience severe sarcomotor and growth retardation, which are invariably present for those who survive beyond infancy. So you have them between one to 6,000 to 8,000 births, and it severely affects all the organ systems. We also have another syndrome, which is called trisomy 13, and that is Patau syndrome. Trisomy 13, most infants, they have a cleft lip and a cleft palate. Congenital heart disease is present in approximately 80% of affected infants. And yeah, um, genital abnormalities are very common. And this is because of the severity of congenital defects. Almost half of the affected infants do not survive beyond the first two months. And about three quarters of them die within six months. Severe mental defect is another characteristic feature. Defects of the brain that lead to seizure. We also have those that have, um, they, are, they are called tetrasomic individuals. Tetrasomic individuals. So that is tetrasomy. So particular is a particular set of chromosomes of the haploid set that is represented four times. It's represented four times. The trisomy is represented three times. So the chromosome of the haploid set is represented four times, and that's why they are tetrasomic individuals. Having seen that, there is also what is called a nuploidy of sex chromosomes, and we are going to be looking at different. Uh, types of syndromes also, like Klinefelter syndromes, like Jacob syndromes, like uh, Metafemales, XX syndromes. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Few just you aniplody of sex chromosomes. And um, the first one in the aniplody of sex chromosomes is the monosomy. That is Turner syndrome. Earlier I said that there's, an, there's a deletion of a particular chromosome. So you have 45 instead of 46. So, and this occurs in one to 2,000 live births of females. So, these individuals are phenotypically females, but they are sterile. They, are, they have short stature. They have a webbed neck. They have immature sex organs. And of course, the secondary sexual characteristics fail to develop. And of course, they have broad and flat. Um, shape, chest. So these are Turner syndrome individuals. Basically, they are sterile individuals. So in generally, the severity of somatic malformations in Klinefelter syndrome is proportional to the number of additional X chromosomes. So these individuals, they have an additional X chromosomes and they have mental retardation and they're approximately 1 in 50 to 1,000 males. So you have those that are born with an extra sex chromosomes. So about 40% of conceptions with Klinefelter syndrome survive the fetal period. You can see they are precocious genital organ, and they have a precocious breast. They have a small breast. They are usually tall. All right. So the next syndrome that we're going to be looking at is Jacob syndrome. Additional symptoms of this Jacob syndrome may include antisocial or behavioral problems. So these individuals have antisocial or behavioral problems and learning disabilities. Intelligence, however, is usually normal, although IQ on the average is 10 to 15 points lower than the siblings. So affected individuals are usually very tall, as can be seen here, and many experience severe aching during adolescence. That is Jacob syndrome, characterized by XYY syndrome, 47XYY. 
Now we will really look at um, the meta females. Typically, the meta females they have um, they have a tall stature. The meta females they have a tall stature by adolescents and normal sexual development and puberty. That's some of their characteristics. Um, they are fertile. They have no or minor mental retardation, but often they have learning disabilities and they have problems with motor coordination. Approximately 90% of cases are of maternal origin and 10% of the cases are of paternal origin. So this is triple, triple X syndrome. So of the triple X syndrome cases um, of maternal origin, 70% results from non-disjunction in meiosis 1, which increases with maternal age. So these are the triple X female, meta female. All right. So having said this, we can now look at some disorders. So there are some diseases called that are autosomal recessive. There are some diseases that are autosomal dominant, and there are some diseases, disorders that are X-linked recessive. These are the three basic disorders that we'll be looking at. All right, so the first one we're going to be looking at is the autosomal recessive diseases. Autosomal recessive diseases usually occur unexpectedly. Parents are carriers, and it occurs in one in four risk of recurrence. Males and females are affected equally in autosomal recessive diseases. Now, consanguinity increases risk. For instance, you could have sickle cell disease, an example of autosomal recessive disease. So, of course, you know that sickle cell diseases affect both males and females equally. Now, the other one is autosomal dominant disorders autosomal dominant disorders it occurs in each generation it doesn't skip there's a 50 percent recurrence risk 50 percent chance that it's going to reoccur now males and females are equally affected an example of this is you have chorea mafans you have neurofibromatosis now Unaffected individuals cannot have affected children. You have lethal disorders, which are usually of a new mutation. So these are um, examples of autosomal dominant disorders. And um, we have the last one, which is the X-linked X -linked recessive disorders. X-linked recessive disorders. Now in X-linked recessive disorders, Either sex can be affected. Now, affected males will transmit the disorder to all his daughters. While affected females, they have 50% risk of transmission to either sex offsprings. So what it means is that um, any disorder that is being carried by the female, it is transferred to the son. So when it's transferred to the son, it becomes a disease in the son because females are homogametic while males are heterogametic xy females are homogametic xx males are heterogametic xy so if the disease is carried if there's a recessive x-linked recessive disorder it is born by the x chromosomes and automatically becomes a disease in the male xy but if it is carried by the x because females are homogametic the effect of that recessive x-linked recessive disorder is going to be masked by a dominant allele which will not make it to be shown so the female now becomes a carrier so if it is born by the female the female becomes a carrier because there is one masculine but if it is born by the male the, it becomes a disease in the male so an example of this is hemophilia another example is vitamin d resistant rickets so these are examples so um of x-linked recessive disorder 